Hey guys, welcome to All the Tronics. In this video, we are going to take a look on this old circuit I designed here. It is a Wayne Bridge oscillator using automatic gain controller and a PLL loop to stabilize the frequency. Take your coffee and come with me. Well guys, this circuit here started with an idea of using a wind bridge oscillator as a very stable and clean oscillator, using automatic gain controller to stabilize the amplitude of the signal and using a PLL to stabilize the frequency. I started the design over this basic block here that is the wind bridge oscillator. When I had the oscillator working, I started to add the automatic gain controller here using this JFET and after I added the frequency stabilization using this other JFET. We're gonna see how it works first understanding what is a Wayne Bridge oscillator and how it works and after going to the automatic gain controller loop and to the frequency stabilization loop. The Wayne Bridge oscillator is this classic oscillator that is a positive feedback linear oscillator. So we have here an op amp that uses positive feedback using an RC network here we see the RC network and the positive feedback works in a very specific frequency with a very specific phase. So we have a pretty clean oscillation in an exact frequency. Oscillation is very clean because this is an harmonic oscillation, is a positive feedback oscillation that works in a linear fashion. The working principle is different than a relaxation amplifier that excites a very non-linear behavior. Here we have linear feedback over a frequency selective network and this creates a very clean output signal. Before we go to the actual circuit, we can take a look here in how a feedback oscillator works and actually it's pretty simple to understand the behavior. We start with an amplifier here that provides positive gain and around the amplifier we add a feedback network. It's very easy to see here that this arrangement will oscillate if we have the gain here higher than one. If we consider that the filtering network here, the feedback network has an attenuation or a frequency selectivity that has a linear gain equals to one for one specific frequency. If the gain, if the overall gain of this network here of the feedback loop is higher than one and the phase here is zero or any multiple of two pi, we are gonna have perfect positive feedback and this arrangement here will oscillate. It will oscillate only in the specific frequency where the conditions of amplitude feedback and the conditions of phase feedback are accomplished. So the idea here is to have a very well controlled feedback network that will provide very narrow selectivity to have a clean output sine wave on the output of the amplifier. If you think a little more about this arrangement, you're gonna notice that if the gain actually is higher than one, each time the signal is amplified by the arrangement, the amplitude will increase until the amplifier saturates to the limit of the power supply or the limits of the outputs of the amplifier. So actually what we need to have is overall transfer function here, gain times the linear gain of the network, this product here needs to be exactly one. And this is why we actually need to have automatic gain control for this kind of oscillator, because if we don't have any closed loop control of the gain, we're gonna never met these conditions here for properly oscillation. Because if this product here is lower than one, the oscillation will die. If the product is higher than one, the oscillation will increase until saturation of the amplifier. So this condition of the product of the gain of the amplifier and the transfer function of the filter needs to be exactly one for proper operation. Knowing these conditions, we can go to analyze the circuit. Let's first understand what we have here, guys. We have an op amp here with a gain of almost three. So the gain here, the overall gain of the amplifier stage is 
almost three. We're gonna understand why we need a gain of almost three in a moment. This gain is set by the feedback resistor here, R4 and R6. And actually the series of R6 and R10 here where we have the automatic gain controller JFAT here in parallel. So this is a normal negative feedback op amp configuration to set the overall gain to near three, okay? We have the classical no inverting op amp stage here. The positive feedback is accomplished by the feedback network. That is this RC in series with this parallel RC combination. So if we draw here, we would have an amplifier with a gain of three using a series RC and here a parallel RC combination. This is a very interesting feedback network because it is band pass and we have a pretty well-defined phase transition. An oscillation will occur at the maximum gain and at the zero phase transition of the feedback network. And here we have a very interesting fact, guys. The phase noise response of the oscillator will be defined by the derivative of this phase transition here. Because this derivative is what provides the negative stabilization of phase, the negative feedback effect of the stabilization of the phase. If the phase increases or decreases, we lose the perfect positive feedback condition and this actually brings the point again to the correct position. So the sensitivity of the feedback network is defined by this derivative of the phase transition. Very interesting. Here back to the circuit, what we can see is that this is a passive network. So this network actually will not provide gain. The feedback network will actually provide attenuation on, on this setup here. And the ideal attenuation provided by this network if we had perfect components, would be an attenuation of one third. This is why we need to have a gain of three to provide compensation for the attenuation of the feedback network. And this is exactly what we see here on the circuit diagram. We have the feedback network, series R, series C, and the parallel RC combination, and a gain of three defined by the feedback network of the op amp amplifier. So if we assemble this circuit on a breadboard, two conditions could happen. First condition is that we're gonna have oscillation and the oscillation will saturate the amplifier because this balance here is higher than one, or the oscillation gonna start and die or nav happen because the combination here would be less than one. To make the oscillator work properly, we need to have the automatic gain controller here to balance the operation of the gain, to control the gain so we maintain a perfect combination gain of one through the amplifier and the feedback network. And how I did this here on this circuit, guys? I first sampled part of the signal through this connection here. And this sample of the circuit is AC coupled to an amplitude detector. This diode here, D1, is working as an AM, an amplitude detector, that is sensing the amplitude of the output signal. This amplitude here will be the rectified, the positive part of the rectified signal, will be something like this is first attenuated by this combination of resistors here and goes directly to an integrator. This amplifier here is called a servo amplifier, servo amp, because it is controlling a parameter of the oscillator in a closed loop fashion. We are controlling the gain of the oscillator in a closed loop fashion and and this is why it's called a servo amplifier. It is servoing the control of a parameter of the oscillator. We see that we integrate the amplitude detection, we low pass filter it here, and we act directly on this JFAT gate here, controlling the resistance of the channel of the JFAT transistor. Controlling the resistance of the channel of the transistor, we actually change the, combi the series combination here that sets the gain and we actually control the gain 
of the op amp. So this actually is an active system to control the gain of the amplifier to maintain the gain exactly in the correct set point. And the set point is set by this Zener diode here that sets a constant voltage on the positive input of the servo amplifier. So we are setting the reference here and the servo amplifier is controlling the resistance of the channel of the transistor to set the correct gain to the amplifier to have the oscillation here stable at the out of the oscillator. I could have used here a full wave rectifier to have a better representation of the amplitude, the instantaneous amplitude of the signal, but for my setup here, for this circuit here, it was simpler to use a single diode. Using a single diode, we have a simpler architecture and it worked pretty well, so I maintained this idea here of a single diode detector. Now that you have control of the oscillation amplitude, we have a stable amplitude on the output of the op amp, we already have an oscillator, but we still have a problem here in this situation. Because the main frequency, the center frequency of oscillation of this setup here will be dependent on the values of the feedback network. And here you have a passive feedback network using resistors and capacitors and the values of the resistors and capacitors will change over time and with temperature. So here we don't have a stable oscillator from the point of view of frequency. And how can we stabilize this setup here? My idea here was to use a crystal oscillator and you can see it here. And using a crystal oscillator, we could generate a very stable frequency reference to control the oscillation of the main oscillator. So actually here we are merging two different oscillators. We have a pretty well-defined and stable frequency, crystal frequency oscillator here, and a pretty good oscillator here that generates pretty clean signals from an harmonic perspective. The sine wave here on the output of the wind bridge oscillator is very clean, but the frequency is not well-defined. And the harmonic content of the crystal oscillator is very bad. We have a lot of harmonic content. It is not a clean oscillator, but it is a very stable oscillator from the perspective of frequency and phase noise. So actually we can do is to lock the phase using a PLL architecture where we control the phase of the oscillator using a closed loop architecture. This is what I done here and we're gonna understand how it works. The main oscillator here runs at 100 kilohertz and the lower crystal I had was a 2 mag crystal. So first I designed this very well known oscillator here, it's a normal logic gate oscillator that runs at 2 mag and I first divided this 2 mag using a frequency divider composed by two dividers, two discrete dividers. First I'm dividing by 10 and here we are dividing by 2. So now we have a 100 kilohertz reference signal to work with. This 100 kilohertz signal is forward connected to this XOR gate here. And, and this is actually the heart of the PLL. This is the phase comparator. What an XOR gate do is to compare the phase of the reference and the phase of the output of the main oscillator. We see here that we have the phase, a sample here of the signal goes down and the amplitude is shifted to half the power supply where we have the maximum sensitivity of the input of the gate. So we see here that we have this resistive divider here setting the DC point of operation and we have the signal of the oscillator AC coupled superposed to this DC level. So here we're gonna have a DC level with the sinusoidal content of the oscillator. The other input is the 100 kilohertz signal from the reference crystal. And this is a very interesting aspect of multiplying two signals together using an XOR gate, guys. The output signal here will be a pulse train where the dot cycle is proportional to the phase difference of the two input signals. And low pass filtering this pulse train here, we see the low pass filter, we have here 
at this C level that is proportional to the phase error of the two oscillators. And if we amplify, if we correctly amplify this error here, this phase error using the second servo amplifier here, we can have here a control signal, V control, actually V phase control. We can have here a phase control signal that is fed back to this another J fat transistor here controlling the resistance, the channel resistance of the JFET that in this position here is actually controlling the resistance of the feedback network, generating small adjustments of the feedback network, changing the center frequency of the feedback network. So actually what we are doing here is controlling in a closed loop fashion the center frequency of the main oscillator to have the phase locked with the reference oscillator. And if the phase is properly locked, we have perfect frequency synchronization of the output. And this is the topology used to control the frequency of the Wayne Bridge oscillator. So actually what we have here is two closed loop control systems working in parallel, one to control the amplitude, to stabilize the amplitude of oscillation, and the other one to control the center frequency of the oscillator. And all this was done over a very linear oscillator to have a very clean output signal. Because if we had only a crystal oscillator, we have pretty well controlled frequency and phase noise, but very poor harmonic content. The TAD, the total harmonic distortion would be very high. If we had only the wind bridge oscillator with the automatic gain controller, we would have a pretty well defined TAD content on the output, but a very poor frequency response, frequency selectivity, and phase noise on the out. Merging the two aspects of different oscillators, we have a pretty well-defined output frequency with a pretty well THD content on the output. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and remember you can support the channel becoming a patron, link on the description. I see you in the next video of All Electronics.